Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and I guess there are many people out there who would say that learning German is a haunting experience to them. All the complicated words, complex grammar structures and harsh sounds. Serious nightmare material. <laughs> But that's not the reason I gave this episode this particular title. Instead, it's because I want to talk about the German word der Geist with you today, which has many different meanings, the major one being the ghost. It can also be translated to various other things though, and it's included in what feels like tons of nouns, adjectives, verbs and common phrases. In my opinion, it's a very special word, another proof of the German language's beauty. So I decided to dedicate a video to it. Let's see if you share my amazement. So as I said, the major meaning of der Geist is the ghost. German, there's also das Gespenst. I'd say the difference is that der Geist can describe every kind of supernatural spirit, while das Gespenst is mostly used for the kind of ghost that looks like a hovering bedsheet saying ooh, ooh, ooh. Exactly. Regarding this meaning of der Geist, several German words come to mind. Der Poltergeist, for example, which I think can also be applied in English. Or der Flaschengeist, which is a genie in a bottle. Die Geisterbahn, literally meaning ghost train, is the German term for the tunnel of horror. You know, the amusement ride. Tunnel of horror? Are there pictures of you on the wall? From Geisterbahn to Autobahn. If you ever spot someone driving in the wrong direction on a highway in Germany, you know, coming towards you, you can open your window shouting Geisterfahrer! Well, actually, you shouldn't shout anything and rather get out of the way, but that's what we call them in Germany. Ghost drivers. The term dates back to around 1975 and is probably based on the word das Geisterschiff. The ghost ship. That's a long lost ship that suddenly reappears on the ocean, like for example in the myth of the Flying Dutchman. An adjective that I really like and that fits in this video is Geisterhaft. Ghost-like. As a hobby writer, I love to use it describing shadows or mysterious people. Apart from that, I want to mention the verb Geistern or Herumgeistern to ghost or to ghost around. It means that a person walks aimlessly or slowly and quietly like a ghost. Papa, was geisterst du denn so spät noch in der Küche rum? Ähm, ich dachte, du bist auf Diät. Bitte sag's nicht, Mama. It can also be used for an idea or a thought that simply haunts you. Mir geistert schon seit Tagen dieser Gedanke im Kopf herum. Dieser Gedanke, dass ich dich einfach packen und küssen will. Last two words in this category. Der Quälgeist and der Plagegeist. The torture ghost and the plague or trouble ghost. What do you think these terms are used for in German? Torture ghost and trouble ghost. If you guessed annoying children, then you are completely right. Good job. Yes, Germans refer to cheeky kids as torture ghosts. Sometimes. Ihr kleinen Plagegeister, runter von meinem Rasen, den habe ich gerade mit der Nagelschere getrimmt. Now the second meaning of der Geist. Something like the spirit, but also feeling, will, mind or soul. That's five different words. How can this all be the same thing? Well, it isn't, but the second meaning of der Geist is something in between. You'll see. First of all, there is spirit in a religious sense. For example, the Holy Spirit is called der Heilige Geist in German. A cleric, priest or clergyman is called der Geistliche, basically translating to the ghostly. Now, geistlich sounds like geistig. Geistig, however, simply means mental or mentally. That's why, for example, mentally disabled is geistig behindert in German. In these cases, geistig is related to a person's mind. Two other terms that I want to tell you about and that kind of belong together because they are practically opposites are begeistert and entgeistert. A possible translation would be spirited and unspirited. Begeistert means that you are enthusiastic or excited about something. Entgeistert, on the other hand, is surprised, most likely unpleasantly or flabbergasted. And what about geistesgegenwärtig, present with one's ghost? It describes a person that is 
quick thinking that reacts immediately to do something smart. Geistesgegenwärtig griff der Polizist nach dem Arm des Kindes und rettete es so vor dem Sturz in den Fluss. But you can also interpret spirit in terms of a vibe, a mentality or a feeling. For example, a German word that many foreigners know is der Zeitgeist, the spirit of a certain time or epoch. Then there is der Teamgeist, the team spirit, the feeling of achieving something by working together in a team. And der Kampfgeist, literally meaning the fight spirit, the will and cuddle, <laughs> the will and courage to offer a battle. Another word is simply love mostly occurring in plural version, is Lebensgeister, life spirits. You can use this one for someone that managed to regain hope. Oh Jenny, das was du da gerade gemacht hast, das hat wirklich meine Lebensgeister neu erweckt. Danke. Gern geschehen. Aber nächstes Mal duschst du, bevor ich dir eine Fußmassage gebe, okay? Ugh. Ew. Let's forget about that very quickly. Since it's kinda related, let me add a German common phrase here den Geist aufgeben, to give up one's spirits. It means that you die, you release your spirit, your very soul, you let go. But no need to feel sad now, it's mostly used for something like a computer or other machines. Oh nein, meine Kamera hat den Geist aufgegeben. <gasps> no more don't trust the rabbit videos anymore? Oh no! But if you weren't convinced yet that the German language is beautiful, Now would be a good moment to change your mind. And then there is der Freigeist. A person that keeps a free will, a free mind, while others try to force their beliefs onto them. Somebody that swims against the tide, which can be stupid and dangerous, but also courageous and revolutionary. Apart from that, I'd like to mention four, four more common phrases here. Hier scheiden sich die Geister means that something is a delicate topic that many people have very different opinions about. Die Geister, basically the minds, scheiden sich. They differ on this question. Then there is, der Geist ist willig, aber das Fleisch ist schwach. The ghost, the mind, is willing, but the flesh is weak. The typical easier said than done situation. Remember the father from one of the previous examples? He wanted to stick to his diet, but then his appetite was stronger than his mind. This is a saying that he might use to explain himself to his wife, who should, by the way, never force him to eat less, because men with a belly are super cute. But then again, that's just my humble opinion. My perspective is that she is von allen guten Geistern verlassen left by all good spirits, completely out of her mind. But enough with the common phrases before I go onto your spirit. Jemandem auf den Geist gehen to annoy somebody. The last important meaning of der Geist is the wit or the cleverness. Geistlos, ghostless or geistarm, poor ghosted, means that something is uncreative, boring or dull. A similar word would be kleingeistig, literally small ghosted, which translates to something like narrow-minded. Geist voll, full of ghost, or geist reich, rich in ghost, however, means that something is smart, original or creative. And then, of course, I have to tell you about der Geistesblitz, the mind lightning, a genius idea that suddenly strikes us. Like deleting your channel? I know that actually belongs into another category, but I thought it would be nicer to add it at this point, because good ideas are often connected to cleverness. So, ich hatte gerade einen Geistesblitz. Ich sollte sofort dieses geistlose Video ausschalten und mir einen geistreicheren Kanal suchen. Was that correct? Perfekt. Ich bin begeistert. Now, mostly for the sake of completeness, a less popular meaning of der Geist involves alcoholic beverages. Der Geist can also be a liquor made out of fruit, for example berries that don't contain enough sugar for fermentation. So they are mixed with high-proof alcohol and then distilled. Isn't it nice that when you research on something and start using all these professional fancy words, you end up sounding like you know what you're talking about? Well, I don't really. But at least now you know what, for example, der Himbeergeist or der Heidelbeergeist are that you can find in the booth section of German supermarkets. So disappointingly, even though it's a bottle with der Geist in it, not a real Flaschengeist. Although I bet there are quite some people claiming that they have seen a ghost after drinking too much Himbeergeist. But there is yet another Geist that you can find in the supermarket. Melissengeist. It won't be in the aisle with the alcoholic drinks though more likely in the medical section. Melissengeist is a home remedy, a sort of herb oil that you can treat, for example, colds and many other things with. If you check it out online, you'll find that it basically helps against 
everything. You can swallow a couple of drops or simply use it as a tincture. That sounds super trustworthy, right? So what exactly can you treat with it? Everything. And how do you use it? Well, rub it onto your body or drink it, whatever. Right. My grandparents always have a bottle of it at home. I'd say it's most likely German old people's favorite home remedy right after Quark. All right, Babitz, I hope that you enjoyed this video about the German word der Geist. Do you know other German words containing der Geist and what do they mean? Were you aware that der Geist can have so many different meanings? Let me know what you think in the comments and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video because that would make me really really happy. For today's video I turned myself into a ghost for you. If that wasn't too spooky to you and you want more Don't Trust the Rabbit then why not follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. And here it's a video that you should definitely check out as well. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one and if you want to support my channel even a bit more then you can also find me on Patreon. I would really appreciate your help. Now wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Bye!